Hello and welcome to another episode of Transfermark TV and today we are actually talking about a player who has not been in the gossip columns, a player who's not uh, all over the rumour mill. Uh, Manu, how are you? I didn't even, I completely <laughs> forgot to even mention. My name's Stefan Binkowski, he's Manu Vitt and today we're talking about a player that Manu knows very well actually uh, but one who's perhaps been forgotten about in this uh, month's transfer window and I'm of course talking about Lille and Canadian striker Jonathan David. Uh, Manu, This guy really intrigues me. I know he intrigues you because Mm. very promising young player, 23 years old. He's got 12 goals and 19 league on games this season. But last season, we saw him be linked with moves to Manchester United, Arsenal, West Ham, Mm. Leeds United. uh, And all these kind of stories have kind of gone dry. It's all gone very quiet. um, And, you know, it's 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 almost as if like it's almost as if uh, European football's almost forgot about this guy in terms of transfer rumors. Uh, tell us what you know you think of Jonathan David. How well is he regarded back home in Canada, where of course you live, uh, and you know just how good you think mm. this this guy is. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, he's very highly regarded here, right? Um, him and Alfonso Davies are sort of the faces of this this Canadian men's soccer uh, program, and um, rightfully so because they were the two that guided this this country to the World Cup for the first time since 1986. Um, and he's done that with a phenomenal goal scoring record: um, 22 goals and 37 national team games. Um, Jonathan David guarantees you goals when he ever he does put on the the red shirt of the Canadian men's national team, right? So like he's a, he's a big star here. Um, obviously not quite as big as Alfonso Davies, and that's um, because Alfonso Davies plays for one of the top three, maybe top four teams in the world, right? Um, Jonathan David is just not there yet, and the yet is the big emphasis here. I think it's really interesting, too, that there used to be a lot of transfer rumors about him, Stefan, um, and obviously he does still score goals for Lille. Um, he's a very prolific scorer for them, and league, or of course a league that does is favors goal scoring quite a bit, right? And um, but it's really interesting that there was a lot of rumors last year and then throughout the summer and then this year. I mean, the window has been difficult. Even the Premier League, we we we're looking at a lot of the high numbers the Premier League spent, completely forgetting that half of that came from one club, right? Um, so yeah, Jonathan David is an interesting case because I think he kind of symbolizes what happens when a market value shoots up. Uh, dramatically, he went all the way to 50 million euros. Yes, he's plateaued a little bit, then went down to 45 million, where he's kind of stuck now. But it's really interesting to see what happens when the market value shoots up like that. And um, the market kind of dries up, especially for center forwards. And I think that's where we're sort of at right now, that the market is really difficult. There is uh, a certain type of strikers that are being looked at, and he's not quite one of those. That doesn't mean he's a bad player. It's just the profile of strikers is different, right? We had Man United, for example, who were a club that were interested in him or reportedly interested in him, go the classical number nine route by signing Wood Weghorst, right? A very different profile of a player. So I think where we're currently at is that, okay, he's a striker. We can score a lot of goals. Um, he does it in league or almost for fun at times, but because he's a little bit shorter, he's a bit more athletic and fast, um, comes from a different profile. And his market value is quite high. I think you, you, he's almost a little bit of an impasse at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting you mention that because, as you mentioned, you know, his market value has dropped from fifty million euros to forty-five million euros hmm. uh, over the last twelve months. And the and what's perhaps most interesting is the clubs that he's been linked with: Arsenal, who have went out and signed Gabriel Jesus in the summer; West Ham, who have just signed Danny Ings uh, as their kind of January striker reinforcement; and Manchester United, who. Brought back Cristiano Ronaldo, but then went for Vout Vekors. They probably will be in front of a striker in the summer, but it looks like Gonzalo Ramos is kind of flavor of the month uh, with, with what they're regarding. So, you know, Jonathan David's now got this market value. It's very high. He's got a contract at Lille until 2025 at the at the earliest. Um, so, you know, where does this £45 million pound or euro striker go from here if the likes of Man United and Arsenal aren't exactly chomping at the bit to sign him now? Yeah, I think the the problem is here that you have probably a lot of clubs that are interested in him, right? But they either have other targets in mind, and this is the more difficult part, or they simply cannot afford him. 
Um, the the examples that I look in are like comparable profiles, and this is like something that we like to do in North America quite a bit. We, we use to convert comps, right? And my comps for Jonathan David are players like Kolomoani or Turam, who plays for Gladbach, right? Kolomoani, of course, in Frankfurt. Uh, and Kunku is another another good comparable, in my opinion, who is, of course, going for a very high price from uh, Leipzig to to um, Chelsea. And that might open maybe doors for Jonathan David, who has in the past been linked to Leipzig. But mm. the, the, the problem here is that he's being compared to players that originally have cost a lot less, right? Mm. So um, in my opinion, a lot of times, league or the lob, some of the top league or strikers tend to go to the Bundesliga, do quite well there, stay then within the league to move to a top four team or go to the Premier League from there, like we saw with MFN Kunku. Mm. At the price tag that he is right now, that is very difficult um, to accomplish for him to kind of make this next step to go to, to Germany, perhaps, right? Why would someone like Frankfurt, who have done really well identifying Kulumuani and signed him on a free transfer from Nantes um, and turned him into this maybe 70, 80 million euro striker, right? Why would they spend a lot of money on a player um, if they can probably pick up some other guy from, from League R on a free again? And I think with Leipzig, you're in a similar case because... The moment you are someone like Leipzig and you get 70 million euros for Nkunku, the history of Lil suggests that they will take all that money, right? Uh, Victor Osiman would have sold for, to Napoli and I have the number right in front of me via Transfermark. They, they got 80 million, uh, 75 million euros for him. And before that, they sold Nicolas Pepe for 80 million euros, right? So this is a team that does ask for a lot of money. And I think that makes it really difficult for, a player like Jonathan David to kind of make the next step or maybe even go an in-between step. Another league that's often been suggested is Serie A, right? But how often do Serie A clubs nowadays spend that sort of money? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we sort of at at the moment, that the market is really interested in this player. But the problem is that other comparable players are a lot cheaper because of the contract situation that they're in or maybe because of the club where they, uh, which club they're playing for. Yeah, it's really interesting. Actually, you, you mentioned Osman there and he actually something that might happen which you know maybe it's a long shot that i could possibly think of is, is potentially that he moves to manchester city or manchester united rather for a huge fee this summer yeah. and then napoli say right well we'll just sign jonathan david as a perfect replacement and then maybe that's when they'll get uh, their big transfer fee that they're maybe looking for but yeah it's gonna be really interesting to kind of see what happens over the next six months whether these kind of big clubs will come back in for him in the summer i've got no doubt uh, that you know we'll mm. see a lot of big strikers move in the summer window. We always do. They're always at a premium. Uh, and to keep on top of that, please do go on the Transfermark website. We've got a fantastic rumor mill forum, uh, which you can jump in. You can put, post your own uh, rumors that you've read, and of course rate the ones that other users have already put in. And it's a great place to keep on top of all the latest news. Uh, or of course, you can also subscribe to this channel and we'll always do our best to update you on the biggest stories. <laughs> uh, but until next time, thank you so much for watching and we'll speak to you soon.